In today's video, I'll be making a copper complex that exhibits copper in the plus three oxidation state. Copper is most commonly found in lower oxidation states, especially the plus two oxidation state whose compounds display the characteristic blue-green color that copper is known for. However, it is possible to oxidize copper up to plus three and in some cases plus four. The complex that I'll be making today shows off copper three's deep reddish yellow color. The complex in question is likely called sodium bis orthoperiodato dihydroxocuprate 3, which is a bit of a mouthful. However, from what I can tell reading online, the structure of the compound made during this reaction hasn't been entirely confirmed. Anyway, to make the complex, we'll need copper 2 sulfate, sodium metaperiodate, sodium persulfate, and I didn't show it here, but we need a strong base such as sodium hydroxide. I didn't do any stoichiometry or measurements for this reaction, simply because my scale isn't capable of reading quantities as small as what I'm working with. However, I'll leave a link to the procedure I base this off of in the description which details the quantities that should be used. First I added a magnetic stir bar to a test tube, and then sloppily poured in a small scoop of copper 2 sulfate. To this I added a few milliliters of water and waited for it all to dissolve. Next, I added an excess of sodium metaperiodate, and as you can see, a precipitate forms. This is copper 2 metaperiodate. I let the mixture stir for a few more minutes, and then I added a few scoops of sodium persulfate. This is what's going to actually oxidize the copper up to plus 3. However, for anything to happen, we first need to add sodium hydroxide, as this complex is only stable in highly basic conditions. As you can see, when I add the sodium hydroxide, we get our first glimpse at the yellow color of copper 3 ions. The stir bar also got stuck on the thick precipitate that formed, so I broke everything up with a glass stir rod. Finally, I heated the test tube on the hot plate for a few minutes, and this is when things really took off. I stopped stirring for a little bit so you could see the color change a bit better, and as you can see the solution is already a much darker color than before. The reaction is most apparent at the bottom of the test tube where the heat is being directly applied. Anyway, I turned the stirring back on and after a few minutes the color of the mixture was a deep red color. And at this point I decided that the reaction was more or less complete, so I turned off the heating. After letting the mixture settle out, I sucked some of the solution up into a pipette, and here you can get a better look at the blood red color of the complex. I transferred this to a watch glass to crystallize out and I set it aside. Now let's take a look at some of the compound's properties. Like I said, this compound is only stable at high pHs, so when I add an acid to it, in this case sodium bisulfate, the yellow color gradually disappears. As you can see, we're left with a colorless solution. Anyway, now the solution that we left on the watch glass is done crystallizing out, and as you can see the crystals are a nice brownish red color. I decided that for my final test of this compound, I wanted to see how stable the compound was over a long period of time, so I set aside both the test tube and the watch glass in my lab, and I'll update you guys in my community tab whenever I see noticeable decomposition happen. Anyway, that's about it for this video, I just wanted to bring awareness to this compound that I don't really see being talked about very much, and I hope it sparks the exploration of more copper 3 compounds in the future. I also plan to have another video out on the channel this week, and it's probably going to be a bit more involved than this one is. Anyway, that's about it for this video, and I'll see you then.